Hello everyone, I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Million Dollar Gift. Million Dollar Gift is, I'll just remind you, a series that we do here in Arlington that really highlights the fact that this town runs on volunteer energy and that we are, whether we are aware of it or not, we are all benefiting greatly from the time and energy that lots and lots of people in town devote free of charge to the rest of us and with great benefit, as I said. Um, today, I am going to be talking to Olga Yulikova, and she is the founder of Olga's List. We will find out very shortly what that is all about. Uh, but I will say that she fits well into this uh, episode because while most of the time we're talking about Arlingtonians directly benefiting from the volunteer energy here, uh, that's, not, oh, that's not exclusively the case. And in this case, it is, we hope, the people of Ukraine who are indeed benefiting from Olga and her efforts, as you will soon find out. So, first of all, I want to say thanks. Really, thanks a lot for being here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, um, partly because I know you have a full-time job. <laughs> I do. Right? So yes. that's, again, that's the very definition of what we're talking about mm -hmm. with this series, is that you have made the decision to devote a lot of your free time and energy to this cause. So let's get to talking about it. Um, and before we talk specifically about Olga's List, how it functions, how it came about, etc., let me just ask you for a little bit of, you know, Biographical information, if you don't mind. Where are you from? How did you get to Arlington? That kind of thing. Sure. So I was born in Moscow um, during Soviet times. My family left in 1989, so I came here to Massachusetts then. Then I went away, lived in different parts of the country, then came back here in 2000. And when my first daughter was born, uh, we bought a house uh, in Arlington, and we've been there ever since. Oh, that's yeah. So you've good long time resident of Arlington for sure. Absolutely. And I, uh, you and I were twenty years. Right. Yeah. And we were speaking before uh, we, you know, turned the cameras on uh, about the fact that your your daughters have grown up here in Arlington. They are they are native Arlingtonians. Absolutely. Um, and so that's that's a great thing in and of itself. But. Um, I'm curious, uh, indeed, about the fact that you said you're born in Moscow. Mm -hmm. um, so that's got to be a question that people are asking <laughs> all the time, they right? Do. How, they do. how, in fact, do you, did you get to this place? So basically, I'll just mm -hmm. ask you, take us in however you want through that sequence of, okay, invasion, like, I don't know, maybe this was all in the works before, uh, you know, mm. one country was invaded by the other. Uh, but just tell... Tell us in your own words how you got to this place. Sure. Um, so I actually didn't believe that the war would start. So I was uh, very surprised on uh, February 24th when the first bombardment started in the city of Kharkiv, where um, the father of my children was born and raised. And we watched it in, to our horror on TV. Um, it was dark, and we saw the splashing lights mm -hmm. of the uh, first bombs falling down, and it was just surreal. For the first week, I was, I don't even know how to describe it. I guess depressed is the best way, and completely desperate uh, to do something about the war. But what do you do? Mm -hmm. So um, after a week of just literally lying in bed, depressed, I figured that I might as well do something, set, set up some humanitarian aid going to Ukraine. And that's exactly what I started doing. And the, um, turns out there was a lot of aid needed to uh, people in, uh, in the territories. And um, I started collecting items to be sent to Ukraine. The Arlington uh, community came through instantly. I had boxes and boxes of things dropped off at my front porch at 14 Amherst Street, and people were just bringing all kinds of donations. Well, how did how did how did they find out? About I put it? the ad on uh, Everything Free Arlington group uh, through Facebook, and stuff just started pouring took, in. That's all it took. That's all it took. Like one ad. Um, so lots of help came, items came that way, which were shipped to Ukraine at the beginning of the war. I did a million other things at that time, and one thing's leading to another. Again, through Facebook, uh, 
a refugee who just arrived in Arlington from the city of Zaporozhye, mm -hmm. that's been under bombardment, mm -hmm. everybody knows that name probably mm -hmm. by now. She just moved to Arlington and um, fleeing the war with her uh, young daughter, uh, middle schooler, and like two bags of things, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. toothpaste, right. toothbrush, right. like not much. She said, I'm here, I'm new, I don't know what to do, what my life is gonna be like. She had a wonderful host family where she stayed, and so the host family and myself, we got involved helping her set up uh, with um, refugee resettlement programs. It was exactly a year ago, in June of 2022. Um, by January, um, she got her own apartment, she was a lot more self-sufficient, and once again, I needed stuff to help her mm -hmm with her new apartment, so I put the ad on the same list, and within hours, item, furniture, household goods, money start coming in. I had over 850 people who brought in stuff or money. 850 All people. All Arlingtonians. 854, I think. <laughs> people brought things to my front porch. As you can imagine, it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, and, and it, it was Careful just- Careful what you wish for, Exactly, huh? <laughs> so it, it was overwhelming. I had no, like, I was like, wow, this is crazy. I can, this is one family I'm helping. Boston Globe suddenly called me to write an article about my volunteer work in Arlington, and that really made me think, uh-oh, now everyone will call me. Mm -hmm. So I had to start August list out of necessity, not because I was planning to do that, mm -hmm. not because I was thinking about doing this, but because there was nothing else to do. People would call asking for help or offering help, and what am I gonna do? Right, you, you right. Uh, that, what a wonderful <laughs> a reason, <laughs> right, to have to get to, to yep. this place of, of kind of systematizing, yep. in a sense, the, you know, the, the aid that you are going to be providing. Yeah. Um, and all because of the, uh, you know, just outlandish response there. Yeah. Uh, because to of Arlington, a couple of residents posts, huh? of Arlington. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that is an incredibly inspiring yeah. uh, story uh, about our town's generosity, but also, I think, about the chord uh, that, uh, that has been hit, uh, yeah. you know, and resonates in this population. Um, as, as in so many parts of mm -hmm. the world, um, uh, as people respond to the plight and the, and the reaction of the mm. Ukrainian people yes. um, to all this. But um, l let's go back a little bit. So you originally, so Olga's List didn't even exist, and you had already put out a couple of calls and gotten tremendous responses. Correct. The first time, you got mostly goods, is that right? Yeah, household goods, household furniture. Goods. How did you know? It, was it a was it a like when you put that first thing out? Was it just like, hey, if you have anything that could be helpful to people in Ukraine, or did you ask for specific things? I did ask for specific things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we had a list uh, that was generated by groups back in Ukraine, okay. asking for certain items. Um, in the winter, for example, it was all about blankets and uh, thermoses and mm -hmm. things of that mm -hmm. nature to mm -hmm. keep people warm. Um, uh, there were other items that they needed ASAP, like medical emergency supplies, mm -hmm. and, uh, basic medication like Tylenol. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the original introduction to helping folks in Ukraine, and mm -hmm. that was for Ukrainians. There were no Ukrainians at that time coming into Massachusetts or um, right, New England were area. Early days, yeah, right. it was the early days. People started trickling in very, very slowly um, in the spring of last year, just one or two families. And just to give you an idea, so on January 22nd of 2023, I helped one family and one state in one town, right? Mm -hmm. Today, today, I have 15. So today, we're talking about four months later. Four months later, that's right. We have on our list 57 families 
That is unbelievable. We have helped people in three states, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and primarily Massachusetts. Yeah. We've had about uh, 20, 21 towns in Massachusetts alone that we cover it. People are scattered all mm -hmm. over the place. Right. We have uh, multi-generational families with grandparents, parents, young children. We had two special needs children uh, here. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, coincidentally, both are in Cambridge, Somerville area. We've had um, people um, with severe, you know, PTSD from what of they've course. been through mm -hmm. um, because people come from really tragic places. Everybody knows Mariupol. Mm -hmm. So they come from there. You know, what they've been through is unspeakable. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not easy a lot of times to to talk to people um, because of what they've been through. Absolutely. But that's okay. My team of volunteers is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, and they all just gather around the people and help. We're constantly in touch. Everything happens. Oh, I should have shown. Everything happens through my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Our entire operation is uh, cell phone based. It's, it's astonishing, right? What can yep. be done with that computer in our pocket? That, That's that right. Super computer Everything in our pocket. Everything is done through the cell phone. Mm -hmm. uh, I have I have to ask you all that. This is, you know, I didn't know a lot of this story before we started mm -hmm. talking. I have to say, and and I am, I, I'm I'm dumbfounded in a lot of ways by what you just said, of course, tremendously dramatic example of the success in the court, as I said before, that res has resonated here, mm -hmm. four months time, and you move from one family to 57 in three different states, probably 57 different towns, because I imagine, you know, more or less. Um, logistically, mm -hmm. that just blows my mind, <laughs> <Yes>. right? <laughs> How have you, like, and you're, you've been the main manager of all this, right? Correct. You and your phone. <clears throat> yeah, um, me and my phone. <laughs> right, you and Siri together. Um, but, uh, like, is this the kind of work that you do in your full-time job? Is this the kind of work that you've done before? Have you had practice of, in some way, of, of just handling the logistics for a response like this, um, both on the donor side but also on the recipient side, right? You were finding, you must have been finding out at the rate of two to four to six families a week coming into this, right? Sometimes a day. A day. How on earth did you stay on top of that? <laughs> or have you stayed on top of um, it? Let's see, how do I do it? Um, so I've had a little bit uh, of similar experience, never of that intensity or scale mm -hmm. or tragic reason for that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I've been a volunteer manager in um, multiple jobs. Um, so I know how to uh, recruit and retain volunteers, <laughs> which is very important. Very important. Um, very important. I, I'm good at matching volunteers with the task that they think they want to do and what the need of the mm -hmm. people we're serving. Mm -hmm. um, I almost never say no to anyone, so that's like a good and a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when I say yes, I deliver, so I stick to what I say. Easy. So um, so that's that. On the physical aspect of it, how it happens, so there's so many different social media tools available today that it's that's not, it's the easiest thing to that's set the up. Easiest yeah, part. everything is done through a couple apps on the phone. We use a lot of things that European people use: WhatsApp, uh, Telegram, and Facebook. Those are the three main um, apps that platforms yeah. that we're mm -hmm. using, and that's about it. That's how all communication goes through those platforms. So we can instantaneously reach our clients, reach our participants, reach our volunteers, everybody. Wow. All the stakeholders are pretty tech savvy. So, uh, well, with a few exceptions, of course. So that, logistically, it's been uh, the easiest thing. What's not easy is um, once we uh, bring people in, connecting them with appropriate services, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have no money to give 
we want to give money. That's been our original idea that when people get and ask for help from us, we'll just give them money. Well, turns out handing out money, it's, it doesn't work, basically, mm -hmm. for all kinds of um, logistical reasons. Right, and even legal reasons, I would say. Legal, think, logistical, it becomes a, it's just a problem. Mm -hmm. So we cannot do that. So we don't do that. So what we decided that we'll do, that we will be raising funds that would go directly to our program participants, um, to our clients, our families. But this funding will be done um, in a strategic way, such as when people come in and they need to pay for certain items for the household. Once again, basic stuff. Tylenol. The child is sick in the middle of the night, you have to run out to get Tylenol. You have no money to do that. Mm -hmm. So we give them gift certificates to um, pharmacies or stop and mm -hmm, shop for mm -hmm. their uh, basic necessities. We also um, providing money for um, to help them move from point A to point B, mm -hmm. like moving expenses. Mm -hmm. We give them money, right now is a big crunch for uh, uh, summer camps for children. So this morning somebody asked me to donate, uh, to be able to donate uh, to one of the families to pay for their um, summer camp. I said, yeah, absolutely. We accept donations for summer <laughs> camp. We accept donation for bare necessities for people. And um, you can see on the bottom of the screen, you can see the QR code that uh, will take you right to our website. And you can um, donate through our website, which is very, very easy. Mm -hmm. um, just in case, if you decide to stop by the Arlington TV station abroad, uh, little <laughs> yes, uh, QR codes yes, for you, we will be so please keep them. Here they are. Keep them. <laughs> we will be displaying these proudly and conspicuously around the studio. Please so that do. You can and you'll see those things access. around town, too. I put them on, uh, I will be putting them on uh, little community gardens, and they're definitely at my house at 14 Amherst Street. So um, we are soliciting donations that will go directly to serve the families. We have absolutely no overhead. Mm -hmm. We have absolutely no bureaucracy. So it's very quick, and we work within hours of when the family appears on our screen, they fill out a very basic form, we, somebody does the intake, one of the intake volunteers calls them. Uh, all volunteers are trilingual. They speak English, Russian, and Ukrainian. They immediately screen the, the family in, find out about what's needed ASAP. If it's a food emergency, I put the food in my car and I drive them to the location or volunteers drive them to the location. If it's something else, we, we deal accordingly, basically. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's an entire volunteer operations, and we have currently, so in the database, per se, we have over 30 volunteers willing to jump in and do stuff. People come every day asking, what else can I do? Really? Every day, but we can always use more people. <laughs> so, so if anybody wow. else wants to join us, there is room. Uh -huh. so, does does anybody, anybody who does want to join, what's the, what's the process? Just use the QR code Perfect. on the bottom of the screen. It will take you to the website. That and the has website three, has all the... Three buttons. I need help. I offer help. I'll donate. <laughs> That's it. Wow. Yeah. You have definitely figured this thing out while the train is moving. You know, you, you've much. somehow been, been able to do that. Um, it's really, it's, it, I have to go back to something that you were, that you were saying a little bit earlier, which is that you will put the stuff in your car and get it over to the family. Uh -huh. You have a full-time job, as we mentioned before. <laughs> yes. I understand that uh, you, your two daughters will soon both be out of the house, and one of them's already in college, but one of them is is, a, is graduating shortly, um, very shortly, actually. Yep. Um, so maybe your child care obligations are not, does, you know, don't take as much time as they used to or something like that. But still, how on earth, like, do you not sleep? Does this, in fact, are you able to do, how many hours a day are you spending on Olga's List stuff? Oh, it's pretty simple. I work 16 hours a day. I work eight hours at my job, and then uh, I take a nap or, <laughs> or I work out, take my dog for a walk. That's really important. And mm -hmm. then I switch gears, and I work for Olga's List until about 
12 or 1 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Mm -hmm. Last series of emails last night went out around 1 o'clock in the morning. And you seem bright and cheery today, I have to say. You're (laughs) doing a great job. Are you holding up well? Are you going to be able to do this indefinitely? Because it sounds like if you're talking about 1 to 57... Uh, I'll bet you're not done. We're not done. Right? And I'll nope. bet that it's just going to, I mean, that it hopefully won't continue at that pace because that seems, Who knows? you know, insane. But as you say, you don't say no I don't to say people. No. So h- how how is this sustainable going forward? You're, you're, you're... I have a great team. So the only way to do an endeavor like that is rely on your team. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I mean, I've had nightmares. Uh, I off, Especially at the beginning, I couldn't sleep well because I would wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, that family, did I get them this, mm-hmm. whatever it was, mm-hmm. or like this family and right. all that kind so of stuff. Right, so many leftover details exactly. that can keep you up, right? Exactly. So I don't do that anymore um, because I have a phenomenal team of volunteers who know what they're doing. People have been trained at this point quite a bit. And um, they just, um, they come to rescue, they're, they're, they, I couldn't do it without them. Mm-hmm. So um, I uh, don't know off the top of my head how many Arlington-based volunteers I have, but a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people from Arlington are helping me. And um, let's see, so that's the important thing. And then I think... Um, who knows what will happen with this war, but I am hoping that at some point it will end, mm-hmm. and so we will not be needed. Right. Um, but then something else will happen in the world. So so I'm open to continue running the organization as long as we're needed. And um, again, it, it it's not easy, but it's very inspiring, and that's, I think... I hope that it, the inspiration and the good stories that we hear will be enough of the sustainability. And about my children, what I want to say also is that they volunteer with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're also oh, running I have around no doubt. helping. I have no oh, doubt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they Those do apples are not falling far. I'm nope, sure they're from running this around right with here. me. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I want to just clarify something um, because, as you said, you're extremely dependent on your group of volunteers, mm-hmm. and of course you are. Um, and you mentioned, you know, around 30 or so, and you mentioned that they're all trilingual, um, or at least the intake. The, Do you yeah. mean just the intake the volunteers, managers. basically, People or the case managers? With right. The clients, We're good. Okay. They're all trilingual. Good. That's what I want to clarify. Yeah, of course. Because you don't want to make people. sure that if people want to volunteer but they don't speak Russian or Ukrainian, there's still things they can do. Oh, right. Obviously. The majority of people do not speak Russian gotcha. or Ukrainian. We have, for example, we have four teachers of English as a second language that teach um, our uh, clients online, Mon- uh, sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have classes in the evening. Uh, this is how we work. We, we Once we learned that there's no room in any ESL class in Massachusetts, we said, okay, we'll create our own. This is what we did. So volunteers came in. We have uh, one Arlingtonian volunteer, he's wonderful. Then we have somebody from New Hampshire and uh, two, a family, a husband and wife, who run it out of their house in Brookline. So they give it up their responsibility. I'm only CC'd on what they're doing. Uh-huh. I, they have... run with that. Uh-huh. All I need to do is like, wow, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I don't, I mean, you make it sound much easier and much more organic and much more kind of, Okay, one thing flows to the next, flows to the next. Uh, then it must be because this is a really a fairly astonishing thing that you have already accomplished, and you're just we don't know how far into it you are, as you've said. And the Nobody fact has that the you crystal ball. right so and that's just about this war because uh, it's no news to you or to me or to anybody out there mm-hmm. that of course there will be a need for. Uh, an organization such as this. Um, In this world, (laughs) um, it may not be Ukraine, it may be somewhere else, but it will be somewhere and something. Um, So sounds like you're up for the challenge, you know, moving forward from here. We're well positioned. We've got the system working. Mm -hmm. We're improving the system constantly. In fact, this week, my 
today. Uh, tonight we're having our leadership meeting in Arlington, of course, um, and we will be deciding on some of the organizational infrastructure that will make things even easier. Mm -hmm. And we rely on technology for a lot of kind of moving parts and coordina coordination. And um, that's supposed to make everything work very smoothly. So I'm not intimidated by the number of families coming in. I'm not intimidated by the number of volunteers um, at all. Um, so I think um, it's a great, honestly, it's a great opportunity for the volunteers too. And people, what I've heard from people say to me, the volunteers mm -hmm. is, I didn't know what to do to help. You give me the opportunity to help. Thank you. So I get thank yous for volunteers to letting them do what they do. Instead well, of, you know? takes you right back to yourself, right? In that first week after the invasion, as you said, and you were just like yeah. in shock, right? You're just like, I cannot believe this is happening. And what can I do? And I can't see what I can do. And you, you know, just do it. somehow, <laughs> you know, yeah. folks who are still feeling that way and yeah. haven't found something, there's Olga's list, mm -hmm. and uh, I can I can imagine that they would be somewhat grateful for that as a as a way again of taking this stuff that's roiling inside of you and and actually having an outlet for it. And what yep. you need to do is devote your energy um, and some time and some generosity to that. That sounds that sounds pretty good. Yeah. So um, if people, um, if our yes. listeners and viewers mm -hmm. are interested in joining Olga's List, all you need to do is click Go on that QR website. code and uh, it will take you right to our website, sign up, So in addition to the QR code, which I think people, uh, hopefully you've gotten the message now, folks. <laughs> um, but what is the website itself? Is it it's Olga's very simple. List? It's olgaslist.org. There you go. So that's it. One word. Augustlist.org. Excellent. Um, I'm going to ask you just right at the end here again. You know, tremendous thing that you're doing, and best of luck to you moving forward. And I Thank hope you. that people will respond as as Arlingtonians already have that they will continue to do so. But I have to ask you, um, uh, just like I I have a couple of close Russian friends mm -hmm. who. The reaction that you described in the initially was I happened to be with them in that in that same period of time. Mm -hmm. And they were they just were I don't even have words to describe it. They 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 had no they lost their energy. They lost yeah. they just they didn't understand how to feel as Russians about this. Yeah. Can you just speak very briefly? You know, out of that situation. I don't know. Okay. Um, part of me is dead forever. Yes. But this work will make it better. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and thank you for this. Thank you for all this list. And thanks for the visit. Thank you so um, much for this opportunity. Yeah. This is a, an extraordinary <laughs> woman, folks, and doing something extraordinary right here in Arlington. That's what this series is all about. And uh, I always feel lucky when I get to talk to people like Olga. So uh, with our thanks to our guest, Olga, you, <coughs> excuse me, Yulikova, um, and her effort for Olga's list, uh, I am James Milan. This is Million Dollar Gift. We really appreciate your time and yours as well. We'll see you next time.